That's Reverend R. Somebody. I don't know who. I love the Lord. I know I've played that one before, but um, it seemed appropriate for today because he sings in that Siloian Southern Gospel style that I cannot get enough of. And the reason why, Mark 12:30. And I want you all to go ahead, if you're doing anything else, please, I beg of you, just listen to just this, these words. If you, nothing else, you can even turn this off right afterwards. Uh, this is the most important thing. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Love. Like the, the Beatles sung, love is all we need. Uh, in a way, they were correct. I think in their general intention, they were absolutely 100% waylaid. It is not just any love that we need. Because indeed, we've all leapt into love situations that have let us down. We've all been in love situations that have treated us roughly. We've all found love with other human beings, lingered in it, and found it ultimately uh, unfulfilling to the depths of us. We've looked and watched other people fall into love relationships and be like, oh man, they're trying to, yep, they're putting the whole world in that and trying to find validation in that. And we've watched them scramble and fail and despaired for them and had compassion for them and were there as a shoulder to cry on when it was all uh, not enough because it will never be enough that's some of the love that can get in the way another love that probably gets in the way even more dominantly first and foremost is love of self and I don't mean that as our colloquialism for masturbation I mean that Literally, in the way that we love ourselves so fiercely as to build us up as gods, to build our needs up as the dominant needs of the universe. To love ourselves so much that we don't allow room for loving others, and we don't allow room for really even receiving love. And this first and greatest commandment, above all else, is a two-way street. And like I was actually talking in my last one of these, is that to do anything, even to fulfill this commandment, is in and of itself a gift of love. Or indeed this sort of reaction to a gift of love. That God so loved the world to create us in his image. That God so loved the world as to give of himself in sacrifice. That we, the giddy receivers of such love, are asked for the simplest thing. To love in return. No greater love. No greater, like, un illogical in some ways, by human eyes, unjust love that God has given us has ever been doled out. So in return, he says, you know what? Just give me everything. Just give me all, just give me all your loving. And it is in that continuum of love, the gift and the receipt, vice versa, Somebody's getting short shrifted in this deal. Lord, you totally are, but I, for whatever reason, he's totally still down with this bargain. And we're getting away with the super, super deal steal that we're going to tell all our friends about every time they ask about it. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. And give, you know how cheap I got this? That is the love. That is all we need. Let your love of God be all consuming. Let every other love that issues forth from your life come through that. Let it fall beneath it if you're a priority kind of organizational person. And if you're not, if you're a little more touchy-feely, get it, get it going. 
then let that love be the hub of your life. Let all else spill from that. Cleansed by his love. Stop. The love you save may be your own. To quote the Jacksons as well. It's a classic rock day on Christian Sands, isn't it? Peace be unto you. Amen. And Sarah.